Young Clark and his friend are watching a sci-fi alien horror movie on the TV since Clark is having a sleepover at his friend's house. Clark's friend is having an awesome time, but suddenly Clark starts crying and his friend is confused. Clark's dad, Jonathan, arrives at the house to pick him up and thanks the parents. On the way back, he asks Clark whether he said anything or not. The following day at the house, Jonathan and Martha, Clark's Earth parents, are having an intense discussion about Clark and his safety at the barn, while Clark is fiddling around with an alien object in the kitchen. Somehow, after he throws it away in anger, it starts glowing and Clark is happy to see it respond. Years later, Clark is working for the Daily Planet and getting ready to go for an all-important launch day. His parents are instructing how to get the tie right and worried about his Flying Man articles on the paper. A new rocket launch is ready at the Lex Corp, and the reporters are busy hovering over the event. Clark is actually the coffee boy, since he is still an intern in the reporter's department. He tries to be nice to everyone. Lex Luthor is ready to announce the details of the mission, and he calls upon Lois Lane, an undergraduate student sponsored by Lex Corp, to start the questioning. But ironically, she is his own downfall as she barrages him with a number of questions on corruption. Anyhow, the countdown begins, and the rocket is launched successfully into space. Clark gives out his own coffee to a tired janitor, and he is thankful. He reveals to Clark that there are a lot of creepy, weird things going on inside the LexCorp building, and the rocket launch is by far the most normal thing of all. As things go on, the janitor notices a man secretly watching Clark and warns him about the tracker. Suddenly, the rocket strays away from its original path, and head down towards the city of Metropolis. Now even Lex is panicking, not knowing what to do. Just then, out of nowhere, the flying man of Metropolis, aka Superman, takes to the skies and tries his best to hold the rocket back. Everyone is amazed, and Superman actually takes control of the rocket and throws it into the sun after taking it to space. He feels awesome under the rays of the yellow sun and feels all-powerful. It's no news to tell you that Lex Luthor got arrested on the spot and has been ordered to serve 15 years in prison. At the Daily Planet, the chief editor introduces the newest recruit, Lois Lane, to everyone, and they are all displeased to see her except Clark, who feels rather nervous. Maybe a growing bud of romance, perhaps. Lois Lane is trying to get the copier working for her copies, and a nervous Clark enters and introduces himself. He asks about the Luthor incident and praises her as well. Lois leaves, but leaves her copies behind, and surprisingly, they are about Superman and Batman and his cape as well. So obviously, next thing Clark is going to do is trying out a cape when he goes back to his tiny apartment. This guy is in love head over heels. Out of the blue, the Star Labs has detected an incoming unidentified object towards Earth, and Superman takes off to confront it. It appears to be a huge fireball at first, but it's actually Lobo the bounty hunter on his space cycle. They immediately go at each other while thousands of citizens are watching down below. Superman learns that he is the last Kryptonian, and there's a huge bounty on his head just because of that. The fight takes to the ground level, and they actually end up in Star Labs with their fight. During the fight, Star Labs janitor Rudy is caught in the crossfire, and he gets stuck between fallen concrete. Lobo tries to take out Superman using an alien liquid substance, and as a result, the whole building gets covered, including Rudy, who is stuck. Superman punches Lobo deep into the sky and lands on Earth with cheers from the crowd while Lois Lane watches on. Unfortunately, it's not over yet as Lobo comes back much faster, and this time, armed with a kryptonite ring that brutally injures Superman, leaves him unconscious. Just as Clark is being beaten by Lobo, the figure appears, revealing himself as a Martian to the public and intervenes. While the Martian distracts Lobo, Clark takes off towards Earth's yellow sun to regain his energy. He heals dramatically and comes back with all the force of the yellow sun. Superman's clothes get incinerated to his speed, and he pauses for some dramatic effect. And as Lobo opens his eyes, Superman lands the knockout punch all the while being naked. The crowd cheers again and Superman has defeated Lobo. At Daily Planet, it's all chaos because the Chief has not seen any news about the new aliens. And Lois Lane is determined to publish her findings about Superman, and that could be aggressive towards the hero. Clark is all fed up and decides to go visit his parents, just like all of us do when things are getting tough. They have a heart-to-heart -heart talk in their truck while coming home. 
and suddenly, Clark orders them to stop. The man who has been following him is at his parents' house, probably looking for him. Jonathan and Martha questions the stranger, but once he tries to get into Jonathan's head, Clark attacks from behind. They get into a small fight and take to the sky. But soon, the stranger introduces himself as John Johns, the Martian manhunter who helped him defeat Lobo earlier. Later, they have a pleasant chat in the diner of Clark's parents' house while sipping tea, and the Martian reveals Clark's Kryptonian history to him using the Kryptonian device. He then warns Clark to not stay hidden from humanity as they can be xenophobic despite Clark's disagreements. Elsewhere, a hospitalized Rudy is undergoing surgery while his child and wife await impatiently outside. His body organs are failing, but in the middle of the surgery, he awakens and discovers he has the ability to drain life, turning them into husks. He takes off from the hospital and goes to a nearby pharmacy for drugs due to his pain and ransacks the place after killing the people there. Next morning, Martha gifts Clark a new suit with an S imprinted at the front and a cape, while the media officially coined the flying man as Superman. Meanwhile, Lois Lane is interviewing Lobo the Bounty Hunter in his energy prison at Star Labs, and she is disgusted of him. She doesn't get accurate answers for her questions, and when she gets to the door, she is met with an anomaly of mankind. Mutilated Rudy is here for Lobo. The door breaks and Rudy walks in to confront Lobo, but he is shot in the back by guards. Lois takes cover while video recording everything, and horrifying enough, Rudy absorbs the life out of the guards, killing them. Rudy frees Lobo in the process of draining his cell's energy, which transforms Rudy into a parasite-like creature and begins invading Metropolis. Lobo escapes secretly. Lois is saved by Superman, who tells her not to publish more stories and takes off after the parasite creature. Superman and John Johns work together to stop Rudy. However, during the battle, Rudy is draining their powers while extracting information from them. First, it's Superman, and Rudy absorbs his brute strength and laser eye power, only to be saved by John Johns. The battle results in John's death after being burnt by Rudy. Lois comes to visit Clark in his apartment and treats his hand cut by the glass. She consoles him after he opens up to her about his inner dilemma. Lois motivates him to do the right thing. But Clark kicks her out when she asks for his story on Superman. Lex Luthor has a surprising visitor at the prison, and a powerless Superman requests Luthor to help him restore his abilities by sending him to the sun. Although Lex is imprisoned, he gets hold of a day pass and takes Superman to Lex Corp. Through Star Lab's CCTV footage, Superman realizes Rudy is the parasite due to Lobo's grenade, which was an organic EMP. The organic EMP consisted of a purple foam liquid and was designed to absorb any and all energy it came into contact with, but instead bonded with Rudy's DNA to create the parasite. Lex deduces that the parasite would have gained Superman's weaknesses from absorbing his energy and reveals that he has enlisted Lobo after buying out Star Labs. The things that money can do, right? Rudy visits his child and wife in secret and is visibly sad seeing he cannot live with them anymore and soon rushes off using Martian's invisibility power. Lex, Clark, and Lobo devise a plan to lure the parasite into Metropolis's power plant and use Lobo's kryptonite ring in hopes to weaken it. They wait, Superman looks ahead while Lobo takes a cigar, and there it comes. Under the dark water, the parasite is no longer big, it's humongous, more like Godzilla. He rises from the water and marches towards the power plant. Superman tries to interfere, but he is thrown onto the power plant without hesitation. Luther orders Lobo to attack with the kryptonite ring, and attack he does. Riding on his space cycle, Lobo jumps onto the parasite and pounds away at the creature, but with no effect at all. Seems like his absorbed qualities have faded away, and when Lobo got caught, he detonates his suicide bomb. Lobo is blown away into pieces, and when the smoke clears, the parasite is still standing there, without any harm whatsoever. The military choppers fire on Parasite, but he just throws them to a side like mosquitoes. In comes two fighter jets launching missiles at the huge creature, but they are just making him stronger. Superman attacks Parasite, hoping to give it his kryptonite weakness once again and Luther somehow finds the kryptonite ring on the severed hand of Lobo. Lois Lane is keen to get out onto the power plant island and cover the story while the whole city is on lockdown. Parasite is able to catch Superman, and it starts to absorb the powers of Superman once again. 
Lex equips the ring with a magnifying pulse rifle and shoots the parasite, ultimately taking it down. Lex then double-crosses Superman but is stopped by an alive John who faked his death using his abilities. Superman tries to take the ring and follow the parasite, but he cannot get hold of it since kryptonite overpowers him. John follows Lex Luthor who ran away with the ring once again. The parasite is now targeting the traffic jam on the bridge over the sea and the people are stunned with fear seeing the monstrosity walking towards them. Lois Lane starts broadcasting live on the scene and hearing the crowd, Superman comes up with a new idea. With the plan failed, Superman tries to calm the parasite down by using his humanity and helps him to remember who he really is, Rudy Jones. Since the people are still panicking, Superman starts talking to the people and this time, they never expected something like this from him. Superman formally introduces himself to the world as Kal-El. But as always, people will show their ignorance when it matters the most. Even after all these happenings, Parasite is yet again provoked by a bunch of ignorant people who knows nothing more. Superman confronts the raging beast, and with his contact, the beast feels what he feels just like everything else. Superman falls unconscious. Suddenly, the power plant begins to overload, and no one can do anything about it. Even Superman cannot fly and reach the power plant since his energy is drained. Without thinking twice, Rudy Jones, the parasite, flies to the nuclear power plant and absorbs the unstable energy before it explodes, and in the process, he turns into dust. Hence, Rudy Jones sacrificed himself so that everyone else, including his family, could live on harmless. In the aftermath, Superman and John meet at the roof of the Daily Planet, where they also see Lobo alive due to his regeneration. John laments that they are each the last of their species, but Lobo reveals there might be more Martians and Kryptonians out there with John heading off to find them. Lois Lane runs up the stairs to catch Superman for an interview, but he flies off postponing the interview for a later time. She is furious, and when she comes to the office, all her colleagues are cheering Superman. He is truly everyone's hero. Superman is an alien, but he came to us when we needed him the most. He believes in the good of everyone. Even in the face of the ultimate evil, he still believes there's something good in each and every one of us. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.